And worst of all, it always results in a crash. Always, because it's false. Anything false cannot be maintained for a long time. Huh? Did you ever tell a lie? How long did it take before the lie got found out? Huh? I think this must be a law of nature, a law of God, that every lie is sooner or later revealed. Every secret is sooner or later shouted from the rooftops. So it's only a matter of time before all of these phony things are revealed for what they are. They're scams. They're, they're criminal uh, deceptions of the whole world. And all these people are going to suffer so much. Why do they do this? Why don't they build their lives on integrity and purity and cleanliness, huh? honesty, truthfulness, straightforward dealings? Huh? Just to get some temporary advantage over the other guy. Uh, this, this competitive mentality, this is the source of all of the evils of the human society. If everybody would just serve God, if everybody would just make their business spiritual enlightenment, and, and you know, that would be nice if they all became devotees of Krishna like us, but even if they didn't, if they would just do their own religion seriously, what a good place, what a nice place, what a better place this world would be. Huh? Like if Christians actually followed the Ten Commandments, <laughs> starting with thou shalt not kill, you know? But no, they're killing millions of animals every year, and they don't think this is sinful. They don't think. Huh? But like Peter had posted on the, on the site the other day, he, he couldn't believe the difference coming from here and going back to the U.S. He couldn't believe how degraded, how ugly, how nasty, how competitive. He said, these people are, are horrible. They're eating beef, and they, they even smell bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. If you eat onions and garlic and things like that, you know, we don't eat those things. So we can smell you like 10 feet away. You know, 10 feet away, that's about a comfortable distance. If you're eating that stuff, don't get any closer, please, because we'll smell it. We'll know what to speak if you're eating meat. I mean, meat eaters really smell bad. Uh, because you're taking in all the fear poisons from the animal as it's being slaughtered. Uh, it's, it's put in a state of panic. It's putting out all this adrenaline and all this other stuff in the bloodstream. And you're eating that. And so naturally it affects you. It's like, it's like being addicted to speed or something like that. Meat eating is horrible. It produces a very low character, a very animalistic kind of mentality. So don't eat meat. And then illicit sex. Huh? How many stupid things have people done in this world just for the sake of a little sex life? Huh? How many lies... How many unnecessary purchases, how much unnecessary uh, labor, uh, staying up late at night, hanging out in clubs, you know, all this stuff, dressing up, and then, you know, then you have to have the new car, you have to have the, the cool bachelor pad, you know, the whole thing. And people are putting so much unnecessary labor into this nonsense. Well, I haven't even got to that yet unwanted children being the result. And then these unwanted children grow up and they're all neurotic because they know, they know. The fetus in the womb hears every conversation. And they know, they know the meaning. Even if they can't process words too well, they know the emotional meaning and they know that they're not wanted. I've done so many, so many um, uh, regressions working it with, you know, in, in uh, intensive therapy where people go back into the womb and remember the conversation between their parents saying that, well, maybe we should get an abortion. This is a traumatic experience for them. Uh, just imagine. 
it's hard enough to go through the whole gestation and all that stuff. But, you know, without the parents even conspiring to kill you, boy, it's horrible. So the kids come out and they're, they're living in fear. Huh? And school doesn't help that either. School is just another, you know, behavioral training that you have to follow the herd or else. You know? So there's so many disadvantages, so many uh, consequences to this sinful life, to this materialistic life, that if we were actually following the scriptures, any scriptures, uh, any scripture is better than no scripture. But of course, if you study comparatively the different scriptures, you find that the Vedic scriptures are far beyond any others. The knowledge that's given in the Vedic scriptures is, is far superior, far more voluminous, far more comprehensive than any other scripture, any other spiritual culture. So we follow the Vedas. Uh, not because we were born into that culture, we weren't. Even Navayovana was born in India, but he was raised in a completely materialistic culture. So why have we become devotees of, of Krishna? Why have we become followers of the Vedic civilization? Because we went and studied everything. We looked into everything and we found that the Vedas are simply better, simply superior. Huh? I mean, I even spent a summer with the Dalai Lama. And, the, you know, the, the stuff that we were studying, Madhyamaka, was great. But, you know, it's, it was only a tiny, tiny fraction of the knowledge available from the Vedas. One little point, really. So we see this, that other spiritual paths get all hung up on one little point. And their ultimate goal is to realize that you are a spiritual being. Well, that's, that's just the beginning of the Vedic path. That's the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita. You know? You should be a good person. That's the first chapter. You should, don't be evil. That's the summary of the first chapter of Bhagavad Gita is don't be evil. Huh? Second chapter is you're a spiritual being. Guess what? There's 16 more chapters. <laughs> and Bhagavad Gita is just the introduction, just the summary, just, you know, the executive summary <laughs> of the Vedas. Uh, so there's so much wonders and so much richness in the Vedas that, that modern people find very difficult to understand, very difficult to approach, uh, because they lack that one understanding uh, or maybe two understanding. Don't be evil, and you're a spirit soul. You're a spiritual living entity. If they understood just those two things, this world would be such a better place. Uh, but that's just the beginning of devotional service. That's just the beginning of the esoteric teaching of the Vedas. Uh, it goes on and on and on to higher and higher and higher and higher levels until by the time you get to the end of the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam or the end of Vedanta Sutra, then the, the subjects being discussed are just so high and so advanced, you know, way beyond Einstein. Very, very advanced knowledge. So I'm not going to go into that today because it's, it's way beyond the level of most people's understanding. But what I'm going to try to... Uh, convince you of or uh, you know incite you to do is to actually study these Vedas actually study them you know everyone or at least uh, most people in the modern West have heard about the Vedas because of our spiritual master Srila Prabhupada but most people have not studied the Vedas and they wrongly consider them to be religious uh, but they're not religious, they're esoteric knowledge. Esoteric knowledge means it's scientific. Uh, just like knowledge of nuclear physics or something like that. And if you know enough, you can actually apply it. 
in your life. And when you apply it, you always get the same result, standard result. This is scientific. You know, if I'm studying chemistry or something like that, and I go in the laboratory and I have some procedure, oh, you mix a certain amount of this chemical with a certain amount of this chemical, and psh, then you get the result, you know, whatever. So the same thing is true of the Vedic scriptures. But instead of talking about chemicals and stuff like that, they're talking about consciousness, your consciousness. Actually, our consciousness is the only consciousness that we know because we're individuals. That's one of the attributes of consciousness is that consciousness is individual and separate for each living being. So you can't directly sense my consciousness. I can't directly sense 